Hey everybody, Mike Iaconelli here. Welcome to a brand new In The Shop. And we've got a really cool, unique topic for you today. And in today's shop, we're gonna be talking about how to prepare and how to get ready to be a co-angler. How to be a co-angler in a bass tournament. You know, we monitor the comments and questions a lot on this channel. And this question, kept coming up over and over and over again. Basically the question is, what do I need to prepare? How do I prepare to be a co-angler in a bass tournament? So today we're gonna to be going over the basics. We're gonna be going over the basic tackle, uh, what to carry, how to carry it, uh, and even talk a little bit about rods and reels. Uh, before we get into that, let me back up and tell you that in the early 90s, so back when I was in my 20s, a long time ago, I was a co-angler. I was a co-angler for three years, leading up to the point where I wanted to make the jump to start fishing on the boater side. And it was a great experience for me. It was a great learning opportunity for me. Uh, I learned a lot about fishing from those years as a co-angler. So if you're watching this video and you've thought about it, you were teetering on becoming a co-angler, let me tell you, go do it. Go try it, okay? And um, a lot of circuits out there locally, regionally, BASS, uh, Major League Fishing, a lot of cool circuits out there that you can participate in as a co-angler, even if you don't have a boat, okay? So in that same breath, let me tell you that I've had a lot and lot, a lot of co-anglers in the back of my boat, right? So I've seen it from both sides. And so I have a perspective on how to be a good co-angler watching it from the back, right? And, and you know, what to do, what not to do. So let's start off with the tackle and what to bring. And the number one thing I think co-anglers do is do wrong are the two extremes. And that is they bring too much tackle or they bring too little tackle, okay? So we, we want to think on the mindset of right in the middle when it comes to what to pack and how to prepare for a day of fishing as a co-angler. Right in the middle. You don't want three or four boxes and bags and 15, 18 rods, that's too much. But you also don't want a little brown paper bag with one spinning rod either, right? We wanna fall right in the middle. So, you know, my mindset is I'm a big advocate of a backpack or a bag, a tackle bag. A uh, lot of great ones out there from different manufacturers, different companies. Uh, this is the uh, Flambo Ike Approved backpack. It's a great way to store your tackle because it lets you carry a moderate amount of equipment in one unit, right? In one bag or backpack. So a big advocate of that. And then on number of rods, Here's a good way of, I want to explain sort of what to carry. And, and in my mind, you know, two to six rods is the perfect amount of rods for a co-angler. Two to six rods. And at the end of the day, really, if you had a few finesse rods, spinning rods, and a few casting rods, bait casters, that's all you need. Uh, you know, even when it comes to picking the rods, go middle of the road. Uh, you know, big advocate of medium action spinning rods, a seven, seven two spinning rod, middle of the road length, middle of the road action. And on casting rods, you know, seven to seven and a half foot, a medium to medium heavy rod, right? A medium heavy is perfect because it can do a little bit of everything, right? So with your 
amount of equipment with your rods and reels, don't go crazy, right? A, a big bag or a big backpack, two to six rods, a nice mix of spinning and casting, that's all you need, okay? The big thing there, if you're watching, is don't get overwhelmed by the amount of tackle. When you're in that boat, you want to be streamlined and efficient and observant. We're going to talk about that at the end. And you don't want all that massive equipment to, to get you all mind messed up, okay? All right. Let's go into the bag. And, you know, this is a big backpack. It's a moderate, moderately big backpack. And I don't know weighs maybe 100 pounds, but I don't have everything in there that I need, like everything they make, and I don't have too little. I have the basics of what I need, but here's the rule that I want you to follow when you're packing this bag. Here it goes. So simple as a co angler. Remember this rule when you're packing your bag. I want you to carry in this bag lures, baits, that cover from the top of the water column to the bottom of the water column and of course everything in between right so top middle bottom that's it when you're talking about lures i want you to think in terms of having some lures that will cover the top zone of the water lures that'll cover the middle zone of the water column and lures that you can fish on the bottom right top middle bottom when you do that, you're really going to be prepared for any situation that that pro takes you to or that boater takes you to. You know, as a co-angler, the, the reality is you're at the mercy of where that boater wants to go. And so by having lures that go from the top, the middle to the bottom, you're really going to be ready uh, for any situation. Um, you know, the great thing about this Flambeau backpack is the way, the way I organize stuff, you know, when I'm traveling as a co-angler is, you know, I just use these smaller boxes and you could even label them jerk baits, crank baits, top waters, chatter baits, jigs, right? And these allow me to cover the spectrum of having just enough lures for any situation, right? I don't need the magnum sized boxes. I don't need any of that. Uh, top, middle, bottom. Let me just show you a few uh, of the basics that I would carry as a co-angler. Of course, top, when you're talking about that top zone of the water column, have some top water baits. Walking baits, poppers, uh, open water, a uh, buzz baits, and frogs, hollow body frogs for top water when there's more thick cover, all right? Lures in the middle, um, spinner bait, shatter bait, jerk bait. Nice spinner bait right there, it's a mollusk. Crank bait, right? A crank bait running in the middle of the water column. And last but not least, a swim bait, especially a smaller swim bait, a 3-3, a 3-8 a, a three, three, a three, swim bait, okay? So lures that cover the middle. And then at the end there, lures that are on the bottom. Uh, drop shot, Ned rig, uh, finesse Carolina rig, jig, smaller compact jig, Texas rig plastics, right? Uh, of all the baits that co-anglers have brought in my boat, that thing has caught more fish than any other lure that the co-anglers have brought my boat. And it's because you can rig that soft stick bait so many different ways. I can fish it on the top, weightless. I can pop it on the top, wacky rigged weightless, in the middle of the water column, barely falling, on a drop shot, on a Texas rig, on a Ned head, at the bottom. A lot of versatility there, okay? So fill that bag up with the basics, top, middle, bottom with lures. And then don't forget about your your other equipment essentials that should be in this bag, just real quick. So you wanna have your own uh, pliers, you wanna have your own scissors. Uh, the Flambeau bag's really nice because it's got 
It's got tool holders for these right in the front. It's got this nice little top zipper compartment. Um, you want your leader material, right? For when stuff happens out there. Uh, terminal gear, I've got VMC split rings and spare treble hooks. Scent, sunscreen, right? Those basics. And then if you're in a tournament, last but not least, carry your own culling equipment with you. A digital scale, cull pins, a balance beam. You could throw that right on top of the bag, right? So carry the essentials. All right, before I get in the mindset, one last thing on this lure selection. And if you keep your eye out in our videos, you're gonna see an entire video dedicated to this, but it is keep to the basics with color. And if you notice, a lot of these colors I'm carrying are basic colors. There are so many colors and lures out there. Every lure, crankbait, jig, topwater, plastics. Stick to the basics. Remember, the number one rule, match the hatch. So here's my basic colors. You want something that's white, pearl, or silver to imitate bait fish, right? White, pearl, or silver to imitate bait fish. You want something green pumpkin or watermelon, a neutral color, great imitator of a bluegill, uh, you know, a perch, right? The greens, the watermelons. And then you want a couple lures to imitate crawfish, your browns, your reds, your spring reds, right? So shad, panfish, crawfish, carry lures that imitate those colors. You're going to be okay. All right, let's get to the nitty gritty of being a co-angler. We talked about what the pack, rods, reels, the bag, the lures, how to keep it moderate, right? No, no extreme either way. But now let's talk about the mindset. And this is the part of the video I really think that is the most important. Uh, because when you get in that boat, you get with your boater, your pro, and he goes, you know, now's the time when you can really separate yourself from the other co-anglers and, and be able to catch fish from the back of the boat. And that's one of the toughest things you can do because again, you're at the mercy of, of where and when, right? So here's the mindset. And I have two variables for you. The one is I always want to be a little different than what the guy in the front is doing, than what your boater is doing. I always want to be a little different as a co-angler, okay? So let's flush out what that means, you know? Being a little different sometimes means casting to different places. So as a co-angler, you know, when you get out there and you get to your first spot and you undo your bait, you have to focus on what you're going to do, but you have to keep an eye on what that boater's doing, okay? So you have to be uh, like dual purpose on paying attention to what you're doing, but watching what they're doing. And I want you to put that lure in a little bit different place, you know, a little bit different area. Uh, you know, if he's skipping docks and he's only fishing the outside of the docks, cast way back up to the walkways. If he's flipping mats and he's only flipping the first 12 inches of that mat from the edge, I want you to go way back in that mat, right? Or, you know, just be different. And so being different in where you're fishing the bait and just a little different, right? I want you to be different in the lure selection that you're fishing. Uh, if he's skipping docks with a wacky rig, try skipping those docks a little bit different area with a shaky head or with a, a weightless fluke or something different, right? So a lure that can do the same thing, but the lure is a little different, right? So I'm a big advocate of paying attention to what the boater's doing and trying to be a little different. Now, before I get to the second big one, let me tell you that the only variable in that is if your boater is absolutely smashing their faces in 
okay? Listen, if he's if he has an offshore spot and he's catching them every cast on a DT-10 shad colored and they're just eating it, choking it, that's a different scenario, right? If, he, if, if, they're, if he's killing them, then that's a good situation when to match what he's doing. But that's like 10% of the time, trust me. That hardly ever happens. So most of the time, be a little different from the back of the boat, okay? And then number two, and listen to me, this is really experience, I'm telling you, from me being a co-angler and from me getting my butt kicked from the back of the boat, okay? Is finesse is so important when it comes to being a co-angler. Listen, if you're watching this and you live in Louisiana or Texas or Florida and you hate a spinning rod, you hate it. Get to like it as a co-angler. Because me as a co-angler, the success that I've had, and getting my butt kicked in the back of the boat, 95% of the time, it was with and because of finesse. Remember, as a co-angler, man, you're mainly fishing used water for the most part. You're fishing behind someone who most of the time is really, really good. These are good anglers, right? And presenting something more finesse is a really good way of having a great day as a co-angler. Uh, just off the top of my mind, a drop shot, a wacky rig, a shaky head, a Ned rig, a finesse swim bait. 2.8, three inch swim bait, smaller lures, lighter line, spinning rod, more finesse. Dude, that's, that's the way to go. That is the way to get bites. And don't think that that style only gets little ones. I've, I've seen 10 pound fish caught behind me with more finesse techniques. You know, the co-angler slowing down getting more methodical, uh, getting more finesse, and getting more bites a lot of times. So uh, number two on the mindset uh, is think finesse. Once again, not all the time, right? If your co-angler takes you to mats, you can't flip mats with this, okay? You can scale down your bait, scale down your weight size, right? Go to a three-quarter ounce instead of a two ounce. Go to a three-inch beaver, instead of a four inch, you can do those things. But um, in general, getting more finesse from the back of the boat, will you'll have a lot of success, okay? Uh, that was a whole lot of information we went over on the mindset of a co-angler. I hope, I hope you enjoyed some of those tips. Uh, remember, moderate amount of stuff, carry right in the middle, not too much, not too little. Uh, simplify your tackle, top, middle, bottom. Simplify those colors. Uh, Think about finesse when you're a co-angler. Think about paying attention to what they're doing and trying to be a little different. If you do all those things, you're going to have a lot of success from the back of the boat. Uh, man, I hope you enjoyed this shop video talking about being a co-angler. I loved it. Uh, it was a great time in my life. I hope you get to experience it. If you like these videos, do me a favor. Stop right now. Hit that subscribe button. Because if you subscribe, I'm going to send you a little notification. Bing! every time a new video drops, and that is once a week. If you're already subscribed, do me a favor. Tell your fishing buddies about Mike Iconelli Fishing on YouTube. We're here to help you learn more and hopefully become a better angler. So uh, good luck as a co-angler. I hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you. Bye.